It's the it's Den, Den versus, versus Now, now challenge. challenge! Three! Today it's race one of group two. And starting us off is the brand that's probably not so familiar to most Americans. That's right, I'm talking about Opal. And up first for team then, it's this beautiful, fully original 1975 Opal Cadet GTE. And it was shipped here all the way from Manila, Philippines. And this gem is owned and driven by Mr. Yang Wise. And for Team Now, we have the 2003 Opal Speedster. If you squint your eyes just right, you can almost see the resemblance to its cousin, the Lotus Elise. And this car is driven by Everad Hitner. And he joins us all the way from Berlin, Germany. Okay then, Al. Let's get ourselves all the way up to the guillotine gate and get round two started. Here we are at the guillotine for heat one. In lane one for team now it's Mr. Wise and the 75 cadet. And to his right in lane two it's Mr. Kittner and the speedster. While the safety officials are clearing the track we'd like to remind you. For both groups in round one the driver with the most wins after three heats advances to the quarterfinal rounds. Okay Barry, the officials have cleared the track. Let's get round two started. Three. Two, one, go! Hit it, flips! He recovers! Speedster gets loose! Cadet is nowhere! Speedster's all over the place and limps across the line! Well, Barry, I don't know what Yang Wise has under the hood of that cadet, but for a car that's almost 50 years old, that thing has got some pickup. Right, Al. He kept pace with the speedster coming down Nevada. But he moves in for the block too soon and ends up going on his side. Yet somehow he recovers by the time he gets into Carmine Corner. Only to go off the track before he makes the jump, leaving the track wide open for Mr. Kittner's speedster. And even with an empty track, he still would have went over the side had not those clunkers been there to save him. And the same can be said about the walls in the boulevard because he can't seem to stop bouncing off of them. And that causes him to just barely make it over the line. And while he didn't really put much speed in that speedster, Mr. Kittner was still able to make it across the line for the first win in this race. Back at the gate for Heat 2. Gangwise needs to get that cadet across the line to stay alive. And Mr. Kittner can get his victory right here with another win. Three, two. One, go! They go wide! Massive block! Cadet flips! Speedster nose dives! He flips off the clunkers! What a loser! Al, be nice. Let's break it all down in the replay. Remember? Like professionals? I'm starting to think these Opals aren't very well-made cars, Barry. Maybe that's why they haven't been for sale in America for decades. Well, Al, I guess you could say Yang Wise was having car problems in the bottleneck because Mr. Kittner executes a devastating pit maneuver, sending him flipping into Carmine Corner. Right, and then Mr. Kittner's speedster practically has no speed at all as it falls off the jump nose diving onto the track. And then it crashes into the clunkers and dies an awkwardly slow death like he's in an old silent film. Terrible, terrible driving. Al, be nice. You're right, Barry. Maybe it's just Opals are terrible cars. And what's also starting to look terrible is our scorecard. Those big red X's are starting to pile up. Back at the guillotine for the final heat. The racers are back in their original positions. Again, Mr. Kittner is looking for his second win to secure his victory. Yang Wise needs to tie it up to force a sudden death. But the way these cars have been performing, there's already been enough death on the track. Al. E. Nice. Sorry. It's just Opals appear to be garbage. Al. Three. Two. One. Go. It's clean. So far. Yang in reverse! Oh, come on! This one is all over! The 
the heck, Barry? I think I could have gone down the track in a shopping cart and gone further and faster than these two, baby. The problem seems to start for Mr. Wise in the bottleneck when the speedster gets under him and sends him into a spin, sending him into the turn in reverse. I'm starting to question how wise Yang Wise is if he bought an opal. Even the guy in the speedster stalls out before he can even make it to the jump. I mean, I'm around clunkers all day here at the scrapyard. And those opals are junk. Al, be nice. Oh, sure, no problem. Mr. Wise beautifully reverses at the jump at a beautiful three miles an hour, crashing onto his beautiful roof and delivering another beautiful, uninspiring slow crash for another beautiful silent movie style death. See, so nice, so beautiful. Can it, Mr. Sarcasm? Unfortunately, no one puts a win on the scorecard. Yeah, because opals are trash. Ow! Unfortunately, with his win in Heat 1, Mr. Kittner will be moving on. And he is the first person in Group 2 to secure his spot in the quarterfinals. The internet says the last opal sold in America was 1980. And it makes sense. Because they're junk. Ow! How many times do I have to say, be nice? Hold on, keep talking, Barry. I have an idea. What? Just blab about something for a minute. I'll be right back. Well, while Al went who knows where, let me just remind all of you, aside from the racers and the qualifier, every other racer will be a surprise. So you'll have to tune in to find out what kind of car and who will be racing. Okay, check this out. Since Opals are so terrible, I redesigned their logo. Now, when someone asks if Opals are great cars, you can say, nope, nope, they are not. Ow. That says Nopal. Oh, hold on. Here, is this better? Should I buy an Opal? Nope, they're for losers. Al, we better end this bit before we loser all our viewers. So please join us again, fans, for the next installment of... It's the Then, then versus, versus Now, now challenge. challenge! Three! Three.